Today, it's not very often that you can find a World War II ship that nobody seems to want, even less common one that played a vital role in one of World War II's most important operations, Overlord. But that is exactly the case for an old ship called Juno, more properly Light Vessel 72, that lies abandoned and severely neglected up the River Neath in Wales. Forgotten today is the vital work carried out by Trinity House, the British authority that looks after lighthouses that remain a vital component of nautical navigation around the British Isles. And two light vessels would play an absolutely vital part in Operation Neptune, the nautical elements of Overlord, the Allied invasion of Normandy in June 1944. The vast armada of Allied warships and transports that delivered troops and vehicles to the five Normandy invasion beaches could only safely reach France if special safe channels were first cleared through the extensive minefields in the English Channel. The channels were of course cleared by naval minesweepers, but would be marked by special buoys with attached lights dropped by two Trinity House light vessels. Following the actual D-Day landings on the 6th of June, there were of course many subsequent landings of troops, vehicles, equipment and so on. And the two ships, once they had deployed their buoys, were then anchored off the French coast on the 18th of June 1944. The aforementioned number 72, codenamed Juno, and number 68, codenamed Kansas. Juno would mark the approaches to the three British and Canadian beaches, and Kansas the two American ones. Each vessel would then be positioned for months off the French coast to maintain the marked channels and operate as floating lighthouses for the hundreds of vessels moving to and fro between England and the French coast, bringing in supplies, men, equipment and vehicles as the Allies battled fierce German resistance ashore. The civilian crews of these light vessels faced the same dangers as the warships and were vulnerable to German U-boats, fast torpedo craft, the infamous S-boats, Luftwaffe air attack and drifting mines, not to mention weather and accidental collisions. Light Vessel 72 was already an old vessel when she departed for Normandy in 1944, having been built in 1903 in Sunderland, England. She had seen service around the British Isles, the Channel Islands and off Gibraltar before World War II. She measures almost 116 feet, or just over 35 metres in length, with a 24-foot or 7-metre beam, and displaces 257 tonnes. She has no engine, being towed into position by Trinity House tenders, whence she would anchor, riding out all kinds of weather, her huge paraffin lamp shining out to 20 miles, or 32 kilometres. She was given the name Juno specifically for D-Day, carrying the name of the Canadian landing beach, and many of the British and Canadian troops bound for the three beaches after D-Day would have passed by her on their way to battle. The second light vessel, Kansas, was withdrawn to England in November 1944 and has long since been scrapped. But old Juno remained on station until the 27th of January 1945, being withdrawn to Le Havre in France for much-needed repairs to storm and collision damage. She was eventually withdrawn to Harwich in England on the 3rd of March 1945, her part in World War II at an end. Juno served on after the war in the Bristol Channel as a lightship until she was sold for scrap in 1973 at the age of 70. She was bought by the Steel Supply Company of Neath, Wales, but thankfully the then company's manager recognised Juno's historic importance, and she was saved from the scrapper's cutters. Instead, she was moored alongside the scrapyard, and has remained there ever since. This year, 2023, will mark Juno's 50th year tied up on the river, untouched, forgotten, and slowly rusting away. Though she has been added to the National Historic Ships Register, no one has yet raised the money to buy and restore her. A survey of her hull, made in the last few years, has revealed that she could float again relatively easily with minor repairs. If you want to buy this D-Day veteran, the steel ship company is asking £40,000 for her. Obviously, a considerable investment would have to be made in restoring the vessel and finding somewhere that wants to display it. I hope that such an outcome will prevail, as it's always desperately sad when historic survivors of important events are neglected and lost.
how much longer this vessel has that was nine years old when the Titanic sank, sitting there exposed to the elements in erosion is anyone's guess, but probably not very much longer. Many thanks for watching. Please visit my video channel, Mark Felton Productions. You can also help to support both of my channels at PayPal and Patreon. Details in the description box below.